So I'm John McCool. I'm the uh, chief platform officer here, which is a fancy word for saying I run hardware, hardware platforms, manufacturing, and supply chain. I was also the executive sponsor for the Mojo acquisition. So got to know Rick and the team for, for a little bit here and uh, got to know what they're doing and, and hoping to share that with you today. I thought I'd start out though with a little bit of introduction to Arista since you're new to, to us. And really the story of Arista kind of follows the rise of cloud networking. <clears throat> Arista was started by Ken Duda, who will be presenting today around our cognitive management plane uh, in 2004. This graph shows kind of the rise of servers in the cloud environment over time. In 2004, if you can just imagine, there wasn't much to cloud networking really at all. Um, in 2008, Jay Shri Alal came and, and really set the direction focusing on cloud. And you can see the number of servers have grown to a point where we've gotten the crossover, more servers in cloud than there are on-premise and enterprise. And this was kind of the, the classic underserved market where cloud guys were taking products designed for service providers or taking product that was designed for enterprise and either they weren't really meeting the quality level and the quality perception was very different in cloud. It wasn't about five nines and bell core standards. It was, can I do zero touch provisioning and it, does it really work? Um, are your counters accurate? Uh, really operational concerns, and then driving that at scale. So really the metrics were how many servers could I connect to my fabric? At the time, the state of the art was really, you know, two switches connecting together in a redundant fashion, master-slave to a number of servers, going from four-way until ultimately we can do to today 128-way ECMP networks that fill the building with millions of servers. And that was really the progression in terms of scale. The other aspect was uh, the cloud providers were very used to provisioning their servers, Linux servers. I want to automate them. I have them fully automated and provisioned. Why can't I do that with my networking equipment? Why can't I run an agent directly on the server itself? Um, they wanted open platforms based on merchant silicon. Uh, they were very interested in predictable before performance. We're, we're at a client server. We have a lot of east-west traffic. I want full interconnectivity between my servers because I can't predict my traffic patterns going forward. I'm writing apps so fast, I don't know what's going to happen. And then they wanted more flexible business models on how we interact with them, either licensing software, running agents on top of our operating system, and that kind of thing. So that's really how the company progressed. Um, Ken and the team worked on focusing on a really great operating system and very different than what had been done in the industry before with uh, a database type of approach with a subscribe publish model for all the processes that worked in the operating system. Uh, we believe this led to an inherent uh, quality level along with the testing me methodology that we put in that was more of a software centric test approach. And then really driving a leaf spine cloth fabric at a large scale. That was the first generation. Second generation uh, took that to the next level with merchant silicon. We got about a 3x performance increase and 3x uh, in density around the platforms we had. And we also built out the beginning of Cloud Vision, which was really envisioned as a way for SDN controllers to look at effectively in a state of network switches from Arista and control their operation. We built the business on merchant silicon from day one, and today we're up to 13 different silicon chips out of five different architectures that we're supporting within EOS with a single operating system, a single release that goes across all products, and that's allowed us to innovate pretty quickly on the uh, applications and automation on top of EOS. As the merchant silicon followed Moore's law, we were also able to increase the number of use cases that we addressed. And we ultimately got to a point where we could fit multiple routing tables within our flagship uh, 7500 products and address what typically had been the routing market. What the cloud folks had asked us to do, they were starting to reach the limits of their data center capacity. In other words, I can't put any more servers in this data center 
or I can't get enough buildings, I have to go to smaller data centers, but I want to connect them as one logical fabric. So they started to build another tier to these leaf spine architectures. We've coined the term univer the universal spine, but it's effectively replacing what used to be a dual routing connectivity, kind of a vertically oriented router that would be their core with a fully meshed spine to all their data centers. So one logical data center, that's how we got into routing. At the same time, Ken and the team took this concept of the system database that's embedded inside one of our devices and scale that across multiple devices to do state streaming into a network-wide database. Um, Cloud Vision was also increased in terms of its capability to deal with configlets, uh, network visibility, and health. And we started to deal with more use cases like L2 EVPN, um, scalability in terms of data center interconnects, what typically had been dual router systems going to this universal spine approach. So you know, as we've evolved, we see more opportunities in the enterprise. We actually started back in 2005, 2006 with low latency in the financial services market. Out of our 5,000 customers we have today, the bulk of them are in our enterprise. And in May, we really started to focus more on campus. Um, we've seen data center designs evolve from what we would call more of a core-centric approach, approach, starting out with your backbone, and then building out kind of places in the network. So a different product set for the data center, uh, oriented around a set of actually hard products that were designed for this purpose, separate set of products built for the campus, specialized routers that were used in the WAN, maybe some different products in the Internet Edge. And what results in these enterprises are a multitude of different operating systems. You have products, hardware products, that can't be repurposed. So I, I can't take my WAN router thing and use that in the data center because that's a different box with a different <coughs> model number. Um, each one of these operating systems evolved with its own technology stack and different management stack. So now I have multiple management interfaces. Uh, and we think if we look at this, the approach that has been taken in the cloud is directly applicable to this problem. So, so why not reorient the th thinking to take the same set of products and use them in any one of these purposes with a single operating system and single management stack that can go across your entire estate? That's the design philosophy and approach that we're using here. So what that results in is taking a data center spine leaf with this replacement of the routing layer with a universal spine, and then you know, adding a campus piece, another spline with a cloth fabric uh, that now can be connected to your edge. And if you're running uh, L2 EVPN in your core, in your universal spine, Instead of having a different protocol, if you want to connect uh, an MRI if you're in a hospital or some spectrographical equipment if you're in a university to your data center applications, use the exact same protocol. Don't make it different. Make it, make it the same. Manage it in a consistent manner. And now we've added Mojo to the mix, and the interest we had was a, a very similar kind of approach from a management style. I think what people were asking us, well, why did Arista buy a Wi-Fi company? The management concept and construct was very important to us, and we'll talk a lot more about that today. So that's where we're going. I think you know, adding wireless, but not only adding the wireless, building out this management construct uh, across wired and wired in a consistent fashion, and uh, you know, addressing the problems that uh, people have in the real world. Any questions? Are you going to uh, address what Arista is doing with, <clears throat> with Mojo and like the open compute stuff at all? Uh, we're, we'll probably we'll touch on that directly, but there'll be a section that we can drill a little bit further into that, that concept. Yeah. 